She was a rich girl who lived in an old haunted castle at the top of a smooth hill. She quite liked it. She wasn't frightened of anything, but this rich girl would live inside of a castle, and when the ghosts would scream and yell and cry, it didn't make her frightened at all. But she decided that one day, in the heart of winter, that she would go down by the side of the sea to see what she could see. But first of all, she decided that she would wash her hair, so she had a shower. And then she thought she would dry her hair, using a hair dryer. But... As she was drying her hair, she could smell smoke in the air. And she looked out of a window and she knew that there was a fire in the town. And she yelled at the top of her voice, FIRE! All of the firemen went to the fire and they wore their masks and they put out the fire. And everyone was very pleased with the girl. But now she'd wandered out. Now she'd gone out of her castle. She'd gone down to the bottom of the smooth hill. And she was in the town, and she thought she would go down by the side of the sea. Now, up in the sky, there were stars, there was snow on the ground, and by the side of the sea, she could see that there were starfish. But as she reached down towards one of the starfish to put it into a rock pool, she heard a tick-tack, 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 clip, and she could see that there was a pirate, a ghost pirate. A ghost pirate with a wooden leg who was tip-tap, tip-tap, tipping by the side of the sea. And he floated straight up to her and went, Now, little girl, you shouldn't have come down by the side of the sea. I'm going to make you walk the plank. And you are going to go into the sea where there are sharks with sharp teeth, long and white teeth. And they're going to eat you up because you're trying to steal my treasure. Now, he had a sword by his side, and he did look very frightening, and I don't know about you, but if I was there, I would have been frightened. But the girl wasn't frightened at all. She just looked and said, um, 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 well, I don't think I really want to walk the plank, and I think that what you should do is... You should come to my house, my castle, my great castle at the top of the smooth hill. And you should then see that I've got gold and silver and diamonds. Gold and silver and diamonds, said the pirate. Uh, I think I'd really like that. Show me the way. And with his wooden leg, he tip-tap, tip-tap, tip behind her. He shouted to her and said, get a move on, get a move on, you're going too slow. I want your gold. The girl said, you'll find the treasure inside of the rooms soon enough. They did get to the great castle. And when they got to the castle, she opened up the huge doors at the front. And the pirate looked and said, where's your gold? Where's your silver? Where's your diamonds? The girl pointed, well, if you want to go through that door there, You'll find that that's where there's something that's a big surprise. The ghost pirate picked himself up and he floated through the air and went into the darkest room inside of the castle at the top of the smooth hill. And the ghost that was there went... Well, the ghost pirate, who might have looked rough and tough, as soon as he heard the ghost, he floated through the walls and away and off to sea and was never seen again. The girl had had quite an adventure that night, washing her hair, drying her hair, going down, stopping the fire, and she went into the room and to the ghost who went, <coughs> She looked at him and said, Thank you very much for getting rid of that pesky, that pesky ghost pirate. When I was one, I ate upon the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship, the captain said to me, We're going. This way, that way, forwards and backwards over the Irish Sea. A bottle of rum to fill me, Tom, that's a life for me. 
When I was two, I buckled me shoe the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship, the captain said to me, We're going this way, that way, forwards and backwards over the Irish Sea. A bottle of rum to fill me, Tom, that's a life for me. When I was three, I climbed a tree the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship, the captain said to me, We're going this way, that way, forwards and backwards over the Irish Sea. A bottle of rum to fill me, Tom, that's a life for me. When I was four, I knocked at the door the day I went to sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship, the captain said to me, We're going this way, that way, forwards and backwards over the Irish Sea. A bottle of rum to fill me, Tom, that's the life for me. By the edge of the sea that was deep, dark and blue, there was a girl who didn't care what kind of litter she would throw under the ground. The snow was falling down and she was laughing and smiling to herself because it wasn't just her footprints in the sand that you could see, it was the wrappers from all of the food that she'd been eating. She would eat and throw the wrapper away. Now her mother, her father, her sister, her brother, her cousins, her aunts and uncles would all say to her, whatever you do, Please don't keep throwing litter. But now she was wandering alone. Inside of that town there was a zoo. And she thought that she would go and visit the animals. It was winter time. There wouldn't be that many people there. And as she walked through the zoo, she could hear the roar of a lion. Oh, girl, what do you think you're doing? You're throwing the litter down. And she looked around and there she could see that inside of an old and rusty cage there was a tiger. The tiger had its pads, paws and claws raised. You girl, you keep throwing your litter upon the ground. And here she could see that the tiger had very sharp claws indeed. I could help you. Now it padded and pawed and clawed its way up to the side of its cage. My claws are long and sharp, and I could pick up all of the little pieces of litter if you were to let me out. So please, just push uh, at the door and I can pull and we can open it together. Please do that for me. The, the girl wasn't too bothered about the idea of uh, leaving litter, but the idea of walking with a tiger behind her really did make her smile. Do you know what? I think I will let you out. Oh, good, said the tiger. He licked at his lips. She looked at him and said, You're not going to eat me, though, are you, if, if I was to let you out? Oh, no. I would not eat you at all. But you could hear the tiger's belly was grumbling. But... She started to push, and the tiger started to pull. That's it, girl. And now it could just start to get its pad and paw and claw around the side of the door. That's it. Push a little harder, and I shall pull. And now it had its two hands free, and its head was starting to poke around the side of the cage. Just a little more. Just then. There came the zookeeper. He looked at her and said, What do you think you're doing, you silly girl? If you let the tiger out, it'll eat you, eat me, it'll eat everyone. And here he grabbed hold of that old rusty iron cage door and pulled it and slammed it shut. Arr! Went the tiger. What do you think you're doing? Said the zookeeper. Well, I, 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 I was going to get the tiger to help me. He was going to pick up all of the litter with his strong pads, paws and claws. And you believed him, said the zookeeper. It was only as she thought about it, she realised just how silly she'd been. Are you the girl that throws litter everywhere? And it was easy to tell that it was her, because there was a great long line of litter that led right to her feet. I'll tell you what I'll do for you said the zookeeper. I'm going to give you a box. 
Now, the box wasn't a huge box, but it was made out of wood. And he opened it up and said, How long do you think it's going to take you to fill this box with your litter and rubbish? A day, two days, three days, a week? How long do you think it's going to take? The girl didn't really know, but in less than an hour, the box was filled with all of her rubbish. And even if she pushed and pulled it down and closed the lid tight shut, and it was then that her cheeks burned red with embarrassment to think that for every hour of every day she had made so much rubbish. From that time on, she didn't throw her rubbish down. But if she did go to the zoo, the tiger would be there and go, Now oh, go on, please let me out. And she thought, it was much better to pick up her own rubbish than let a tiger out of its cage. There was one thing that she really loved to do, and that was to wrestle, which would have been all right if everybody else wanted to wrestle too. But this woman, who was extremely strong, who lived in the village that was there by the side of the sea, she would find anybody and pick them up, twirl them round above their heads and throw them down upon the ground, whether they wanted to or not. Now, she thought it was fantastic. She thought it was a great thing. But those people, as they would rub at their backs and pull at their shoulders, they were not pleased to have been wrestled down to the ground when they hadn't wanted to. Now, this woman that lived in this village and everyone was sick and tired of being thrown to the ground with her arms up behind their backs and twisted round and thrown around. And I'll tell you this. She came to the side of a football pitch and all of the children were playing football. They were playing quite happily. They were kicking the ball this way and that. But this woman had a wicked smile on her face because she decided that she would take the goalkeeper, pick him up, just as he was about to catch the ball, spin him round and throw him down to the ground. Ow! I didn't want you to do that! And then she got the captain of the team. She picked him up and pulled his arm behind his back and he didn't want that either. And now everyone was sick and tired of what she was doing. Now. Standing by the edge of the field, there was a man, a man who always loved to make things. He would be taking nuts and bolts and wires and magnets, and he would twist them around and make fantastic things that no one could believe he'd made just from old pieces of junk and pieces of wire. He was a very clever man, but he looked and he thought, that woman needs to have somewhere where she can take her energy and make good use of it. Now, he didn't know what he was going to do, but that night, everyone went into the houses. Now, it was starting to get dark, and they were inside of the houses, and just as it was starting to get dark, all of the lights went out, because the electricity had gone. The electricity wasn't being generated the electricity wasn't being carried through the wires or through the pylons or and into people's houses. There was no electricity uh, and everyone was sitting in the dark with candles for lights. And it was then that the man had an idea. In his back garden, he had an old bicycle that someone had left in the back lane. He'd taken some magnets he put some magnets at the back attached to the wheels and when they went round and round and attached to the side of the back of the bicycle they would make electricity he went straight over to the woman's house the wrestling woman's house and he knocked at her door and said you come here nobody had really spoken to her like that for a long time but she went along with him and he said you sit down there and he sat her on the bicycle. Now she was always full of energy. That's how she could pick people up and wrestle them around. And she started to pedal on her bike and the wheel went round and the magnets moved. And they made electricity. Didn't make a lot of electricity. But just enough 
to light the lights inside of that small town. So everybody would pretend that the electricity had gone off just so that she could go and she would sit on the bike and pedal. If she tried to wrestle anybody to the ground they would all light candles with flames at the top and I've got to tell you she would like to jump on top of the bicycle and pedal the wheels around and make the magnets move and make the electricity flow through the wires that lit all of the houses in the town. The man would smile because when the children were playing football and shouting and laughing and screaming she would be standing there and her eyes would be heavy because she'd spent so much time making electricity for everyone inside of the town that she would stand by the side of the football match and her eyes would get heavier and heavier and she would fall fast asleep and the children could play their football as long as they ignored the way that she snored. The snow fell from out of the sky like soft white goose feathers. This boy loved the winter. He absolutely loved the ice, the snow, and he even liked the slush that would run through the gutters. Now, on this midwinter's morning, he was walking along. Uh, he lived right by the side of a huge lake where there was a, a, a park, a garden. He'd been there ever since he was a very small child. But now, as the snow fell down, he looked and smiled to himself. And he looked and he could see the old woman was having a hard job walking on the path that was going through the middle of the park. He looked all around him. He looked this way and that and looked and he couldn't believe it because down on the ground, by the edge of the path, he saw that there was a huge ruby and he looked at it. He picked it up. He wondered what it could be for and he wondered what it was for and he looked and he threw it and he looked and in the middle of that ruby he could see that there was a number one. It was just there for everyone to see. He wondered, he wondered that as the snow had fallen it had put some magic inside of this garden and there was that magic, the number one. <laughs> he wondered, it couldn't be, could it? Maybe I could have one wish. Now he looked at the old woman who was still trying to make her way through the park. He looked and he said, oh, <laughs> I uh, wish that wherever the old woman walks, there is no ice or snow or sleet or slush beneath her feet. The old woman shouted, screamed, oh, look at this, I can walk, I can walk properly in the snow. And even though the boy loved the snow, he was pleased to say that wherever the old woman walked, she would not slip, she would not fall. And he smiled. He walked behind her and he walked and I've got to tell you that by the edge of the garden he saw that there was a door. Now this door that he saw wasn't square, it was round and it wasn't straight up and down, it was in the ground. He wondered if it was because the snow had fallen that he'd never seen it before or... But he was very curious and he <coughs> knocked on this door. And as you would think, with a door that is flat and down to the ground, it opened up this way. And there, on the other side of the door, coming up some steps, he saw that there was a girl. Uh, a young girl. Now, this young girl had on her wrist a golden bangle. She looked and she said, I've been watching you. You had the chance to wish for anything in all of this world. And all you wished for was for somebody else. I think that you deserve to have a few wishes for yourself.
She took the bangle off her wrist and handed it to him. He placed it on his own wrist. So I can have any wish that I want if I place this bangle. Oh yes. You could see that the old woman was making her way along the road. And there was no ice or sleet or snow beneath her feet. And he looked and he knew that she loved gardens. And he wished this. I wish, oh how I wish, that the old woman could have a garden all the year round. Whether the snow falls or the wind blows or the rain falls down on the ground. The old woman was so grateful to the boy. And they became very good friends. He never ever found that door that was flat to the ground ever again. But he made sure that he would always wish for other people. Because the best gift, the best of the wishes that he could get, was to see how happy he made other people. In the old village, the sun was hot. It was beating down. But the river that flowed through the middle of the town was deep and clean and clear. The girl was walking by the side of the river. She was a good girl, and she knew what it was to have money inside of her pockets. But as she was walking along, she looked and she saw on the ground a well. Now, she'd never really seen this well before. It was broken at the top, but she thought about wishing wells, and she thought of all of the different things that she could find, perhaps, inside of the well. And when she looked inside of the well, well, what did she see but water? But there was something floating in the water. She looked and she saw that there was a bottle. Now, the bottle had a beautiful golden top. And she wondered, she thought, this could be riches. It could be such a good thing. Now, when she tried to reach down to pull it out, she couldn't. So... She took hold of the great handle at the side that pulled the bucket up on the end of an old wet rope and then she could get the bottle. And when she picked it up, she found it was very heavy. Oh, it could well have gold inside of it, she thought to herself. Uh, it could have gold. And when she turned the top and took that golden top from off the bottle, she looked inside and there she could see that there was water. <laughs> Oh, well, it's a beautiful bottle, and it is a really good thing. And I didn't know that I had this, and now I've found it inside of the well. I'll put it inside of my pocket. Not as good as gold, but it is a, a good thing to have all the same. Now, the sun was very hot in the sky. Everyone was getting hot, 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 hot. And you could see that there was a horse now the horse was clip clop clopping its way through the town and the horse was hot, hot, hot. Its tongue was lolling inside of its mouth. The girl didn't wait for a single second. She took that bottle, opened it up, poured some water down into the ground and there was a beautiful mirrored pool of water and the horse <laughs> lapped the water up. But here's the strange thing. The horse looked at her and the horse started to speak. The horse said, oh, thank you, thank you. You are a good friend to all animals. The girl couldn't believe her eyes and her ears that the horse was talking to her. And when the horse went away, it didn't slowly clip, clop, clip. It trotted and cantered away and the girl felt very good that she'd helped that horse. Now the sun had been hot, 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 hot. And not a single drop of rain had fallen down. The river wasn't flowing and the lake wasn't filled. And she wondered, <laughs> she just wondered, since the bottle was still so heavy in her pocket, if she was to put some of that water into where the river should have been. Maybe it would fill it up. <laughs> she thought it was a silly idea, but she was willing to try anything. She took that bottle, she unscrewed the top, 
And she started to pour what water was inside and she stood there and the water came out of the bottle and it came out of the bottle and it kept coming out of the bottle and soon the river was flowing through the middle of the old town and the lake was filled and all of the animals and all of the people had water to drink and as she walked through the middle of the town she could see the animals looking at her the dogs were going thank you thank you for giving us some water when we were so hot 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 and the cats would go meow thank you for giving us some water and the bottle never got empty the bottle was always heavy in her pocket but it never got empty and if ever anyone needed a drink of water all she would do would be to take her bottle and pour the water inside of a cup and it was the sweetest cleanest clearest water and you would see that girl inside of the town tall and strong and good but the pocket that held the bottle was always worn because it was always heavy but she didn't care she could always give someone a drink of water Everyone knew him inside of the village for all of the right reasons. He would help anyone. He could fetch and carry. And if someone was carrying some heavy bags when they were coming back from the shops, he would be the first one to come and pick them up and carry them and take them to the houses. This was kindness that he held inside of his blood and his heart. Kindness on his lips when he smiled. Kindness in his eyes but helpful too. One day, this boy was running, and it was a cold winter's morning. And I've got to tell you that all of the people were complaining about the cold, but then he heard the sound of birds in the air. The birds were flying this way and that, and they were coming down, and they were swooping down on the trees and taking the last of the apples and the oranges and the pears from off the trees. They weren't eating them all. They were taking a bite here and a bite there. They swooped down and they were taking just a bite out of each of the apples and each of the pears. And the farmer, the farmer was riding along on his horse. And he was angry. And he was sad as he came close. Because he was keeping these apples, these pears and these oranges so that people had fruit throughout the whole of the winter. The boy looked. He didn't see anything. But he thought that he could help the farmer. Because he would take all of the apples and pears and oranges. That the birds had taken a peck out of. And he collected them all up. And he put them in a huge sack. And he staggered and carried them into the town. Now in the town there was a tall golden tower and the boy with a heavy pack climbed all of the way up to the top of that great tower and at the top of the tower he emptied out the apples the pears and the oranges and everyone was looking and thinking what is that fool of a boy doing he's usually so kind but now he seems to be doing the strangest of things the boy smiled and when he got to the top he started to make a rattle and cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. And he called to the birds. And the birds who were landing on the trees and spoiling the apples, the pears, and the oranges could see that there was a huge pile of apples and pears and oranges. And they didn't have to fly so high or so hard to get to them. All of the birds came down. They swooped, they cawed, they cackled, they went, ah, 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 thank you, boy, thank you, thank you, for getting all of those apples and pears for us to eat. And it meant that they ate all of the apples and pears and oranges at the top of the golden tower. This boy, 
Everyone was pleased with him. They couldn't believe it. This boy had helped everyone. And a farmer, to say thank you to him, said, I've watched you, boy. You can have a horse like mine. So instead of having to carry the things and bring them backwards and forwards, you shall have a horse of your own. The boy would ride through the town and everyone liked the way that he helped them as he rode on his horse as high as a king. A river flowed through the village, deep and wide and fast flowing. But people would throw things into the water. They would throw stones, they would throw cans into the water. But an old man was painting the river. But he wasn't painting it the way that it was now, filled with litter and rubbish. He was painting it the way that he remembered it when he was a boy. A girl, a good girl, was walking by the side of the river and she saw the old man painting and she turned around and looked at his painting and she gasped, oh, Is that the way that the water used to look? The old man was quite sad and said, Yes, it is. But everybody spoils the river now and just as they looked on the other bank of the river they could see that there was a boy. And a boy uh, had a can and he was throwing it into the water. The old man looked and said, if you keep throwing your rubbish into the water, the ships and boats can't come along here. I don't care, said the boy. And just at that moment, down the river there came a boat, and it did get stuck on the stones at the bottom of the river, on the cans and the rubbish and the bottles. The old man and the girl, they started to pull at the rope that was at the front of the ship and they got it free from all of the rubbish and the old man looked at the boy on the other side as he was still throwing cans and rubbish into the water you should be ashamed of yourself I don't care a few weeks later the girl was going to go on holiday she was going to go to an island in the middle of the sea it was surrounded by blue salty water but she couldn't believe it when she got to the airport because sitting there was the boy. They had to sit next to each other on the aeroplane and when they got to the other end of the aeroplane flight they were in the same hotel. They could have played alongside of each other but the boy would splash and throw things and the girl didn't want to play like that. One time when she was sitting by the edge of the pool she listened and she could hear some shouting, Help me! She thought that she recognised the voice. And he shouted again, Help me! I'm stuck! The girl got up from beside the pool and started to look. Now there was a river. Now it wasn't as deep a river as in her town, but there was a river, and on the river there was a boat, and in the boat there was the boy. And he got stuck on the white stones at the bottom of the river. Please help me, I'm stuck. And even though the boy had shouted and yelled at her and been unpleasant, the girl didn't wait for a moment. She went over. He would push and she would pull. And he would push and she would pull. And when he pulled, the girl pushed really hard and... I've got to tell you, that was the way that they got the ship free. That boy's boat was free. And he said something to her that he'd never said before. Thank you. Thank you for helping me with the pushing and the pulling. We got the boat free. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. From then on, if she saw the boy and he had a can in his hand, whether he was on holiday or whether he was in the town, if he was just about to throw it, she would go, <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> the boy would remember. And he'd put the can away, he'd put the can in the rubbish bin. And that river, when people stopped throwing things into it, started to get cleaner and clearer. And the painting that the old man had made of how he had remembered the river 
was the way that the river started to look.